Hey guys, welcome back to Canada. I wanted to check in real fast here. Um, we're in day two from the Movement Disorder Society's International Parkinson's and Movement Disorder Congress. And we're taking a little quick break, but I wanted to check in because this morning at one of our workshops, we touched a lot on Parkinson's apathy and low motivation. And I feel like I hear this a lot from um, most of you out there. If you're in uh, my booster tribe or if you are working with me one-on-one -on -one, or even if we're just kind of chatting um, as friends, I feel like I hear this um, Parkinson's apathy, Parkinson's, you know, I don't feel like I have enough motivation sometimes to work out, to be consistent with my workout over time. And we talked today, there was a talk um, there was a talk by Anthony Phillips talking about dopamine levels and how they correlate with apathy and motivation. And this sentence stuck out and it's the quick hitter that I want to give you guys today. He said that dopamine levels rise with the anticipation of a positive reward and is sensitive to the reward magnitude. So those are a lot of kind of medical words, dopamine and anticipation and all that good stuff. But essentially the takeaway is that as a person with Parkinson's, your dopamine levels are already low. So in order to boost them up, we need you to be anticipating a reward, which means that goal setting is really important for you. So it's not actually the dopamine levels don't rise um, more significantly when you actually receive a reward or achieve a goal. It's the anticipation of achieving that goal where the dopamine levels rise. And, um, you know, the sensitivity, the amount, the dopamine levels rise in your brain is sensitive to that, the magnitude of the reward. So a bigger goal, um, anticipation of that bigger goal is important. So an example might be when you're working with a physical therapist or setting your goals for your fitness program, if you're working out on your own, you know, setting a goal of, I want to be able to walk to the mailbox and back. Now that may be a huge goal for you. That may be a large, large goal. But for some of you, that might just be, oh, yeah, it'd be nice if I could do that. But there's not a little, a lot of internal drive there, um, as far as something really exciting that gets you um, really anticipating achieving that. So, in um, and to kind of mirror that and take it to the next level is like if you're setting a goal with your physical therapist, um, maybe your goal is to be able to walk your daughter down the aisle, um, you know, in six months. You are using a walker now, but you want to be able to hold arms with her and walk um, confidently down an entire uh, aisle in front of a bunch of other people. That's a big goal and it's also meaningful to you. So you need to, when you're working out, it's the takeaway is really having big, bigger and biggest goals that you set that are realistic to you, that you feel like are achievable over time and not just setting goals that you think maybe your spouse would want you to be able to do or your doctor wants you to be able to do or something your physical therapist told you you should be able to do. So I know we're guilty of this as physios. Um, we're like, you need to be able to stand on one foot for 10 seconds. And that's a goal that we impose upon you. But when you're working with your therapist um, and setting your goals for your fitness program, you should be the one that's directing those goals and they should be the support team. So um, with my clients, I always ask them, what do you want to achieve by the time we're done working together? Um, in my, my online booster program, the exercise program that I have through Invigorate, we go through an entire process of goal setting and we talk about what you want to achieve and why you want to achieve it, why it's meaningful to you. So your brain can be prepared to do the work to get you to that goal. You're anticipating that reward and that's when the dopamine levels really kick in. So let's see if I have anything else there. So you need to... Yeah, just kind of set goals that are valuable around what you want to achieve instead of what you think other people want to achieve for you. And the next little nugget is about motivation. And I just wanted to hit this home and I talk about it all the time, but we were talking about disorders in the brain um, and just different levels of dopamine that can challenge someone's motivation and why that happens. So the motivation deficits that are often seen in Parkinson's are caused by a multi multivariable so it's lots of things that could come in um, you have you know some deficits in the way that your brain makes decisions and um, the way that it identifies patterns just by default of how your neurotransmitters your brain chemicals are affected by Parkinson's and your Parkinson's medications um, and then you also have some of these emotional deficits where um, you feel kind of social withdrawal or um, 
you know, just lack of interaction with people and that affects the way your brain works too. And that can affect your overall motivation. So the thing that I wanted to really hit home here is that recognizing those feelings of low motivation are not a reflection of the person that you are on the inside. You're not lazy. Um, you know, I hear that a lot. Like, I'm just, I must just be lazy because I can't get myself to do this on my own. It's like you feel like it's willpower that you're lacking. And I just want to reinforce that um, it's not willpower. You know, it's not you. It's not that you're broken or that you don't have the capacity to be motivated. It's the way that Parkinson's, you know, has affected your brain chemicals. And the important part of that is there are strategies that you can use like goal setting, like, um, you know, the joining a group to do exercise, seeing a physical therapist, talking to um, a anyone about your diagnosis to help you kind of cope and use strategies for anxiety. There's so many things that you can do because you're not broken. You just need different strategies than the rest of us who don't have a Parkinson's diagnosis do. So I just want to hammer that home um, and just let you know that it's not you, you're not lazy, but you do need some different strategies and powerful strategies to compensate for what's going on in your brain. So I hope that was helpful. I'm going to try and um, check back in a little bit later today. I'm hanging out with some of my great friends. Um, if you are really eager for a lot of these updates, I just want to give a little shout out to Naomi Casiro over at NeuroFit BC. Um, she's doing some live updates um, from the Parkinson's Congress and some exercise videos. Um, Nate Coomer from Seattle, the Parkinson's Fitness Project, he hopped on a Facebook Live a little bit earlier. So if you're really craving a lot of this information and golden nuggets, um, seek those people out. I know that um, Reactive Physical Therapy out of California is here as well. Allie is giving some updates over there, Allie Elder. So you have plenty of us, Parkinson's PTs, Parkinson's physios that are trying to keep you updated. So check them all out, give them some love, like their pages. Um, everyone here has stuff to offer you and we appreciate you listening. So um, if you guys thought that this was helpful or you feel like you know someone who's struggling with apathy and motivation, Please share this video with them so that they know that they're not alone and um, you know that they know that it's not them and uh, there are definitely things that they can use to get back on track and achieve the things that they want to achieve um, every single day. So I appreciate you all and I will talk to you very soon. All right. Bye guys.